controversy stirred last spring here in Chicago when Steve Coakley, an aide to the acting mayor, was found to have made outrageous claims against the Jewish community, including the charge that Jewish doctors were responsible for the AIDS epidemic by injecting it into black people. Chicago Mayor Eugene Sawyer and other black leaders' delay in denouncing Coakley caused even greater hurt in the Jewish community. After five days of deliberation, Coakley was finally dismissed, but a zealous group of 150 gathered to rally in his support. God! Hired Steve Coakley a long time ago! Nobody on the planet Earth can fire somebody God has already hired! Coakley still did not back down on his allegations against Jewish doctors. gathered, a Chicago Tribune poll indicated that less than 8% of the black community opposed Coakley's dismissal, and another mayoral aide had this to say about those who were present. That was a special interest group in the black community. That was the, um, the black nationalists, um, the black militants, a very real part of the black community, but not uh, a very large part. And so we're talking today on The Oprah Winfrey Show about blacks and Jews in America. Hey, you see Whoopi Goldberg when she did that interview in Playboy magazine? 
When she did that interview in Playboy magazine, she wore a sweatshirt that had white boy on it. White boy. Now why would she be wearing a sweatshirt saying white boy on it? I even saw Lisa Bonet do it one night. Lisa Bonet did it one night on the Johnny Carson show. Wore a sweatshirt called white boy. It's bad enough many of our people walk around with those red flags on their shirt. You ever seen many of our brothers and sisters walk around with Reebok on? I don't really care about the gym shoe. I got nothing against the country. But that British flag just colonized black people every damn place it went. So why would one of our youth be walking around wearing a British flag on our feet or on our chest? Because we don't ever know about those symbols that are used for the imposters. Hey, how about Santa Claus? That's an imposter. Big white fella with a beard, jumping around the black community, jumping to the chimney, bringing toys that parents worked real hard to save for. Hey, Santa Claus, it's an imposter. We need to get rid of this thing. This thing is causing a lot of harm to a lot of people. We have to do something about these symbols. Hey, you see that 16th Annual Music Award? Hey, hey, you talk about imposter, you know who won for favorite male vocalist of soul, rhythm, and blues? No, not Bobby Brown. No, not Michael Jackson. George Michael, a white guy, won for soul, rhythm, and blues. Hey, what's going on here? Man, you better watch out. Them imposter's on the move. You know what it is? They're supposed to look like you. They're supposed to think like you. They're supposed to walk like you. Here's one ad that ran in one of the major weekly magazines is showing the evolution of man. Look at this. Eight, 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 white man. Oh, you imposter, you are a fool. You know, you know. You're trying to fool one over on us. We didn't go for that one. But that was amusing. I thought that was cute. Hey, you ever see, uh, you ever see, uh, you ever see any movies with imposters in it? Oh, man, they be all the time. Tonight, hopefully, I'm going to have some of them imposters call me on the phone tonight and see if I can get to talk to some of them about some of the great impostering of all time. Hey, in the meantime, how about looking at another imposter? Oh, maybe this one of the imposters calling it. This is Steve Coakley, live and uncensored, talking about the imposters. Who's this? Oh, Carlton Heston. How you doing, Moses, the imposter? Yeah, yeah, you, tonight, for calling us in, Mr. Heston, to win an award. You win the Imposter of the 50s Award for having started that great movie called The Ten Commandments, where you impersonated Moses. You did a great job. Yeah, yeah. And so you questioned it too when you got the car, right? You thought maybe one of these drones should have been in that position. I'm telling you, boy, I tell you, I was one guy who really looked like Moses. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what we're going to do? You won. You won the uh, Impostor Award, Charles Heston. We're going to send you a picture of the original uh, 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 Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, yeah. It looks just like the Jacksons. Right, right. We're going to send you that picture for being the Impostor of the Year. Thank you very much. The Impostor of the 50s, Charles Heston, who impersonated Moses in that great movie called The Ten Commandments. So, let's see here. Let's continue. Today we're going to look at the Impostor. Hey, how about this one? How about you see those blacks go to the hotel, the Hyatt Regency Hotel, and declare themselves black Americans? Yeah. Say we call ourselves African Americans. Blacks call themselves African Americans. Yeah. They ran this. They went to the white hotel and declared they were black African Americans. Now you see that word African Americans? Very tricky. Now just think about it. A young white fella whose great-great-grandfather was born in Johannesburg, South Africa, whose father was born in South Africa, who he was born in South Africa, who came to America, is an African-American, he would say. Hey, so we can't have a white African-American and a black African-American. Can't have them both. So, somebody's impersonating African-American. So we got to deal with that question. That's something got to be dealt with up in here. Hey. How about impersonation? How about, let's just think about what's coming up this year. How about this show? This will be running in October. How about Columbus? He impersonated the discovery of America. Imagine, is a man going to discover a land where people are already living? 
Now, you know, I knew everybody was up on that. But boy, when I tried to tell everybody not to walk in that little funky parade and to stand up and resist that white supremacist symbol of impersonator Columbus who stepped on the land and was the dumbest thing on the planet. He ain't know where he was at. He was so damn dumb. And still, he credited this man with the discovery. And I figured it out. It wasn't Columbus who was stupid. It was the people who believed and followed what he was doing. Oh, man, you should have seen the parade last year. All the African-Americans in the Columbus parade. What are y'all doing there? What are you doing there? You're confusing the children. you hanging out with the imposters. Can you imagine when Steve Coakley was in trouble in the mayor's office, the Italian community showed up and condemned me for being a racist? For saying Columbus did not discover America? Imagine, can you imagine? In fact, this was the article in the Chicago Sun-Times. I mean, they just blew up this thing. Here I am, holding a book called They Came Before Columbus. That's a book written by our uh, brother Ivan von Sertema. And it says, Steve Coakley calls Columbus Day white supremacist holiday. Says this, culturally exploitative. You know what one of the aldermen said? Baloney, blacks got their holiday. They got the Bud Billiton Day parade. <laughs> Man, can you imagine Bud Billiton Day the holiday? That's a fictitious character too. That's an attorney's impersonator. What the hell is going on here? So, when we did the first Columbus Day, we got a very strange reaction. In fact, this is what the Chicago Sun Times said in their editorial, a slur on American pride. This is what happens when you begin to crack into the missile web, the seed of inferiority that is sown by symbols of white supremacy usually associated with impersonators. How about it? It strains the logic to the breaking point to contend that Columbus is a white supremacist holiday. It's no such thing. It's a day of commemoration of an Italian explorer playing a role in opening the new world. It's a day of celebration for the Italian Americans with pride in their ancestry. Most importantly, it's an American holiday, an occasion for all ethnic groups to rejoice. Can you imagine what rejoicing would a Native American do? One who would have known one of the 134 million who died since Columbus came near America in 1492. Can you imagine the brutality associated with this invasion and takeover and the disgrace of the people suffering through the impersonation of a discovery? Oh, does it hurt? probably wondering what it was that Sun Times said. It says, leaders of the Italian American community were probably, were properly indignant at the charge labeling the holiday as racist. Their indignation reflected the views of most other groups. The racist charge came from Steve Coakley. <laughs> Coakley distributed pamphlets urging blacks to boycott the Columbus Day Parade and to attend an anti-Columbus Day rally sponsored by Coakley on the South Side. Coakley chooses to be super critical of the facts surrounding the Columbus myth. Facts surrounding that myth? Whew, I get the impersonation feeling. He points out that Columbus never set foot in America. All right, so he never set foot on what is now the United States mainland. There he is, and maybe it was Lee Bear. Columbus was the first European to land on the American shores. The first European to land on the American shores. Isn't that something? If there is any legitimate dispute about Columbus's role in history, it should be between the Scandinavians and the Italians. Imagine having said that October 15, 1985, Sunshine's editorial. And they wonder why we want to boycott the newspaper. They wonder why we want to boycott the media. When you look at information like this, can you imagine? In any of this, black history is not affected by speculation about who was first, equating the discovery of the New World with the beginning of colonial oppression of the Native Indians, and by aligning blacks with these oppressed because both shared similar experiences 
They say Copeland tried to bring this all together. Huh. It says this argument is suspicious. Similarly convoluting arguments could be developed for discrediting all of the holidays. You know what's so important about that? The last paragraph. This type of argument is suspicious. Similar convoluting arguments could be developed for discrediting all of the holidays, which means that they know what we know, that this is an impersonation. Thanksgiving, impersonation. Thanksgiving, and you murdered all the people? Christmas, impersonation. Blind hair, blue eyed Jesus. You can't go in the Bible anywhere and find a blind hair, blue eyed Jesus anywhere. There's no reference to a blind hair, blue eyed Jesus anywhere in the Bible. In fact, those who claim to be the chosen people, they are, they too, are just imposters. Yeah, that raises a whole other question. Hey, anybody know the story of Noah, Ham, and Shem? How about it? Have you ever seen this book, From Babylon to Timbuktu? I think you need to get that book. From Babylon to Timbuktu, read it. It talks about Noah, three sons, Shem, Ham, Yaphet. Say, hey, they was all black. Black, they was black. They was real black. Yes, sir, they was black, black. They was jet black, like Disney 48, Willie Stone. You name it, they was black. But somebody's been impersonating them. And you know what? It said Yahweh had a grandson named Ashkenaz. And that those people went out over the area, which is now known as Germany, Austria, and Europe. They came through the Caspian Sea and the Caucasian Mountains. Better read up on those. Better read up on that biblical lineage because it has something to do with impersonation. You know what they said in Revelation? They will call themselves the Jews, but they are not. They are but the synagogues of Satan. Impersonation. Seems as though everybody dealt with the question. But you know what? I bet you when we get to the bottom of impersonation, we're going to find it's going to be difficult to make a change. That those people who are pretending to be things that they are not, are not going to give up the act until the whole show is canceled. Because that's why you're in the trouble that you're in today. Yes. Where is the Native American? In America, Chicago was full of them. They aren't here anymore. In fact, on the city seal of the city of Chicago, there's a picture of the Native American standing at the shore, looking at the arrival of the ship. Oh, we got a whole bunch of copies of the seal the city seal of the city of Chicago with his ship arriving with the Indian at the shore and it says the ship means the coming of white man civilization as if the one who was on the shore wasn't civilized and after this being in force 150 years Steve Copley sitting at Harold Washington's second inauguration on May 4th 1987 looked at that seal and thought it was an embarrassment that a black man was mayor under a seal that was an imposter. Yes, the ones on the ship were impersonating civilization as if the one on the shore was not. And that, too, is an imposter. In fact, we began to put pressure on the mayor and others to stop the city seal. Oh, man, it exploded all over the city. It exploded. Did you see all those seals? They put one seal on the cover. They put another seal on the cover. Here's another seal they put on the cover. They put all the seals, all these articles on the seal, papers. All day they went, what about this seal, this silly seal? We hate the seal. Watch this hand and put the sample on the seal. Brush there and put Brush head on the seal. Oh, man, this thing just went and erupted. But it was an eruption about an impersonation. And you know what? The imposters are still on the seal. And you know why? Because they're violent. Yes, those who take the position of being the imposters have learned to use violence as a way to convince people to do what it is they want. Do you think the death of John Kennedy, Martin King, Malcolm X, Medgar Evers, Lincoln Rockwell, the shooting of George Wallace, the assassinations of Kingston, Justice State, 
Will of Hampton, the Mark Clark, the Watergate of Nixon, the scaring and running about me. Hanging America, the shooting of the Pope, the killing of another Pope in the 33rd day of office, the shooting of Ronald Reagan, Casey losing his brains on the way to the hearing, me falling trying to swallow 50 pills to forget before he got to the hearing. Sam Giancana killed, uh, uh, Roselli killed, Thomas Caramacinus killed, uh, 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 Dagger Hoover died mysterious even. Hey, that's heavy drama. The imposters are very powerful. This will be no easy task. But you must remember that the imposters use those false symbols as ways or thermometers to to thermometers to know just how you're feeling about a particular issue. Impossible comes from insecurity. You know, they almost tried to have a World's Fair in Chicago for the 500th anniversary of Columbus in 1992. Yep. The same time you yep. some with the centralizing. You know, that's the same thing they said they do in the Bible. You know, I kind of like the way you do that. Hey, you know, that's the same thing they said they do in the Bible. Well, that they would centralize things in somewhere a Antichrist would rise up and he would wear the sign of the beast and the people would be forced into submission. And you know in that last program on the death of democracy, hey, I told y'all y'all might not like me, but that ain't got nothing to do with your condition because you in trouble. And you know what? We're all in trouble. Because unless we step up and do something about the imposters, the game, or the act is on us. Hey, how about it? Oh, there's a phone ringing. You know, I'm expecting a call from the hidden hand. <laughs> oh! Good evening. Ha! See, I didn't say hello. <clears throat> yes, this is Steve Copeland. This is the hidden hand. Hey, hidden hand, I've been waiting for you to call. Yeah, yeah, you're the best of the, all the imposters. The hidden hand. What's so good about the hidden hand? The hidden hand is the guy that always does stuff, though you can't never find him doing it. I asked him to be on tonight because he's one of the greatest imposters of all time. In fact, one guy wrote a book called The Unseen Hand. It was about the conspiracy of running the world. But you know what? I like this hidden hand because he, like Deep Throat, has been allowed to remain secret. He's been allowed to impersonate people. He's been allowed to impersonate presidents. He impersonates democracy. He impersonates voting and fair play and justice. All the impersonations that are going on. Hey, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hey, let me ask you this, Mr. Forgiving Hand. What do you think about that impersonation of justice these days? Yeah, you know, where there's so little justice in America that all you get is the Supreme Court and uh, 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 what's this guy? You get all these little phony court shows now. You know why they got so many? Phony court shows, because it ain't no justice, so you got to impersonate the justice. Put it on TV and act like it's from. Yeah, man, they ain't putting phony hospital shows on, all kind of silly police shows and stuff. Yeah. Listen, Mr. Hidden Hand, I just want to go through this. Was it you that I saw in that article when they were talking about hidden hands and things affecting cheapskates? And, you know, what I'm doing, I'm giving blog to all of the things associated with what you're doing that... Every time you do something, every time I see it in the paper, all I see is your hand. Look at here. There's an article about how you shoved aside all the white-collar workers. Just push them right off the table. It was in the Tribune. Yeah, it was in the Tribune. You push them right off the table. And you know what's so funny is, every time you do something, hit the hand, all we ever do is we see your hand. There you are again. There you are talking about pension funds and how you got to rein in your power. Look at that. The hidden hand is everywhere. Here's another one with the hidden hand in it. Talking about that, you are again, Mr. Hidden Hand. How you pull strings over things. Yeah, here's another one, Hidden Hand. How you and Russia getting together. We talked about that in the first one, about the Cold War. There's the hidden hand again. Notice, every time they're talking about something being done, you never see nothing but the hands. Look at that. They're talking about eating up corporations and the merger strain. Look at that. Ain't nothing but hands. Every time they say, who runs the power in New York? Look what they do with the hidden hand. You see all them spooky faces? Yeah, but you don't see that. You can't tell nobody in specific. Says who runs New York and put all them spooky faces on the key. Man, that was good camera. I like that. The people are going to get to see that straight up. The key thing is, Mr. Hidden Hand, 
What I like about you is how you could do this for so long without us ever seeing the elbow, without us ever seeing your shoulder, without us ever seeing the look at your face missing in hand because it's your ability to remain secret that has kept the imposters in control. Yes, Mr. Hidden Hand, you win our second best imposter award next to Charles and Hudson as Moses. It's you, Mr. Hidden Hand. And I got to hand it to you, Mr. Hidden Hand. You're one of the best. <laughs> yeah, that was the Hidden Hand. Yeah, Mr. Hidden Hand, we have to thank the Hidden Hand. for he's always up to something. That Hidden Hand is always up to something. We can't never see what he's up to. The Hidden Hand. We got to remember that. I know some documents talk about that Hidden Hand, too. Hey, how about it? Steve Copley, live and uncensored. What's real good about this is we get to take a look at everything. Can you imagine that we get this opportunity to share information with you? To get a good chance to look at everything. Let's see here. What else did we miss in here? How about it? Uh, uh, how about, uh, oh, let's see here what we got here. How about uh, Cleopatra Moses Tarzan? You ever seen Tarzan the imposter? He was impersonating justice in Africa, running around in a loincloth with a monkey and a woman. Impersonating justice. Ha, ha, ha. Tarzan, we had to get him too. We don't want to forget about him. What are the impersonators we got here? Oh, how about on the dollar bill? Yeah, look at that dollar bill. Look at them pyramids trying to impersonate the original man and woman. Hey, watch that dollar bill with that notice order to support him. I ain't got a dollar to show you, buddy. Because when you fight the impersonators, you don't get money. You just get the glory and the pain of getting to fight it out in a sense of right and wrong. In fact, just let me spend a minute saying that so that you can understand what it is that we're doing here every week. Every week what we're really talking about is fighting right and wrong. It's about fighting right and wrong. And it is what we do here every week. So what's important about this is that you understand why it is that we do what we do. If you know anything about Steve Coakley, what you should know about Steve Coakley is that he fights the hidden hand. Steve Coakley names the names. You see, we keep fighting things, and we don't know who we're fighting. We keep fighting Ronald Reagan and George Bush and Jimmy Carter, impersonators of power. We fight the little Richie Dailies and the little Pee Wee Mayors and the little Pee Wee, the little Pee Wee Aldermen and the little Pee Wee State Representatives. Not that their jobs aren't awesome and responsible, but they don't have the real power. The imposters are the players that we're looking for. Hey, I tell you what y'all to do. You want to join my team? Hey, I think what you ought to do is go get that four of 400 and take a look at that. Go get them top 1,000 corporate executives there. Yeah, you take a look at that. Go get them Fortune 100 billionaires that's out right now. You go take a look at that. Then you go out and you stand up and you fight those symbols of those imposters because it is your ability to fight them that will make the difference. Hey, next week we're going to see you again. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. Mm, mm, maybe you can call us, 995-7612. Maybe you can tell us something that you think we ought to know. Next week, we're going to take a look at who the hidden hand is. Hey, how about it? Hey, don't wait ever. Don't wait forever, man. You come in. Hey, what about this? You ever seen this book here? How about this book? What color was Jesus? Yeah, find out why Hoover was running around trying to find the black messiah. You know why? Because he's coming back, just like he said he would. Yeah, I bet you everybody ain't waiting on that, huh? Yeah, we're going to have all hell going to break loose. Hey, that's them in the words of a hellraiser. That's right. How about it? Don't forget our theme. This is our theme for the day. When we're talking about the imposter, there ain't no place like home. That's what it's about. The beginning. From there, there is no impersonation. That, the fact that. Hey, see you next time. How about it? We still got some time left. I'll keep on talking. Hey, hey. What happened to Huey Newton? Yeah. What happened to Mickey Leland? Hey, what y'all trying to do with Gus Savage? Hey, what happened to Harold Washington? What happened to Martin King? Yeah, I like Malcolm too. Where's he at? Yeah, I ain't never forgot what you did to Marcus Garvey. Yeah, that's right, Noble Drew Ali. I remember when you tried to ruin Elijah Muhammad. I ain't never forgot it. 